It's arguably the most loaded fight card in history. If you're not a UFC fan yet, but you have been interested in diving in, you must cancel all of your plans tonight and check out UFC 300. We've got title fights, BMF fight, former champions versus rising stars. This one is massive. Let's data dive. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Data Dive powered by Market Movers. My name is Tyler Nethercott, better known as Teapot, and I am really excited this week because our Dummies book is out. We have been working on this for over a year, Sports Card Collecting and Investing for Dummies, written by myself, Jeff, as well as Ben Burroughs, one of our former esteemed colleagues and team members. It came out this week, earlier this week. You can find it on Amazon. It was really hard to fit into just 300, frankly, kind of small pages everything about the hobby, about collecting, about investing. We did our best. We'd love to have you check this out. If you do, make sure to leave us a great review on Amazon. This was a huge honor and I'm really excited about it. And another thing that I am excited about this week is UFC 300. This is one that I realize probably won't win the view count contest for this video, but it's a timely video that warrants coverage. Uh, fighting sports, specifically MMA, mixed martial arts, I know aren't everyone's cup of tea, but as a former wrestler, it's something I have really enjoyed learning about over the past two years. And this weekend is one of the biggest, if not frankly, the biggest fight cards in history. It's certainly the biggest I've ever seen since I've been watching UFC for the last couple of years. And this one, like I said, is UFC 300. It's happening tonight, Saturday, April 13th at 6 p.m. So if you're watching this video in the future from when, when this releases, I guess you'll already have missed it. But Dana White and the UFC have put together one heck of a fight card, a lineup of fights. So I'm gonna briefly preview those fights. And then we'll of course take a look at those fighters' cards to see what's been going on and what might project to happen if they win or lose. As always, this video is brought to you by Market Movers with nearly 50,000 UFC cards in our database and having just hit 3 million total cards. Visit marketmoversapp.com and use promo code DIVE when you check out. You'll get 14 days completely free to try it out and then 20% off for life as long as you're subscribed. Now let's get into the data. All right, so briefly, I want to start out and we'll just look at the fights. One really nice thing about Google is if you ever type in UFC or specifically the UFC a title, they give you this nice little widget. You don't even have to go to another website. It'll show you the fights. So starting with the early prelims at 6 p.m., this lineup actually looks like what could be the preliminary card. So as you move into the evening, you get better and better fights, just like with boxing and other combat sports. And I can tell you several of these fights, they're no joke. So you can kind of take a look at this as we move into the preliminary card. We'll cover all of these fighters as well as the main card. You've got Yuri Prohoshka versus Alexander Rakic. You've got uh, Calvin Qatar versus Aljamain Sterling. Holly Holm versus Kayla Harrison. And Sadiq Youssef versus Diego Lopez. And then the main card, frankly, you're lucky if you see one of these caliber fights on a given weekend. Uh, we've got a whole lineup, three title fights. We've got, we've got multiple things going on. So we've got Alex Pajera versus Jamal Hill. We've got Wei Li Zhang versus Yan Xiaonan. I'm going to struggle with some of these pronunciations, but I think I'm pretty close. Justin Gaethje versus Max Holloway. Charles Oliveira versus Armand Sarukian. Bo Nickel versus Cody Brundage. And for whatever reason, there was rumors this was going to be canceled. To my knowledge, that's not the case. So you can see it, the same fight also up here. So what I want to do is jump into price movements and I'll show you kind of what these uh, fighters cards have been doing over the last 180 days, the last six months. And you can see, I will say one thing about UFC, these guys, they don't have a ton of cards typically. Over the last few years, we've been seeing more and more products. We've seen Prism, we've seen Select, we've seen Chronicles, we've seen Topps Chrome, Topps and Topps Chrome but they don't have a ton of cards and there's not a ton of volume on UFC cards in general. It's definitely one of the more, you know, uh, kind of under underappreciated sports in uh, the sports card hobby, in my opinion. But we've got Holly Holm, who's famous for having uh, knocked out Ronda Rousey back in the day. Her cards are up 39% over the last six months. And as we scroll down, you can see Justin Gaethje's been on a little bit of an upward trajectory. We'll talk more about him, obviously. Sarukian also up. And then, you know, a handful of people on the downward slope, including Diego Lopez. Bo Nickel was just incredibly hot last year. He's another guy that we'll talk about. Jamal Hill was injured temporarily. Sterling kind of coming down from the high of his career earlier when he was a champion. So let's jump in. And I'm going to start with this fight with Alex Pajeda, who is minus 138 Vegas odds versus Jamal Hill, who is plus 110. So pretty tight odds in terms of who's going to win this fight outright. Now, fun fact. 
Jamal Hill is actually from Wyoming, Michigan, and went to high school about a mile from where I used to live when I was a kid. I've lived in Wyoming two different times, once as an adult, once as a child, and he still lives in Grand Rapids where I moved from before coming here to Atlanta. Wyoming's just a little uh, suburb of Grand Rapids. Pejera is an unbelievable fighter, just like Hill, frankly. He looks like Sagat from Street Fighter, if you remember. I'm gonna pull it up on my screen. If you see this, obviously it's kind of this cartoon rendition. I'm not kidding, Alex Pejera kind of looks like this guy. Every time I see him, I just want him to have like that pirate's eye patch over his eye. Now here's the problem. I've watched every one of Pejera's fights since he came up into the UFC. He came as a, as a kickboxing phenom who had fought Israel Adesanya in the past prior to coming to the UFC. I frankly, I just can't get behind this guy because his entire strategy seems to be predicated on calf kicks. We're talking about this subtle movement where he's taking his foot and he's just kicking the back of the calf of the guy he's facing over and over and over again. And what happens is that can deaden the muscle in the leg to where now this fighter that you're up against, they just basically can't stand or, or let alone even walk anymore. They're kind of crippling around. Now that's not his only move, that's sort of his initial move to keep the distance, quickly uh, calf strike, but he is a ferocious striker with one hit knockout potential, and he sets those KOs up by calf kicking guys until they can't move anymore. And frankly, for me, and for many, that's incredibly boring to watch. So let's take a look at some of their cards, see what's been going on. I'm gonna be rooting for Hill because, like I said, he is from my hometown, and also because I'm tired of watching calf kicks. So if we look at some of these cards, these are some of the more, let's call them liquid or notable cards. But the, like I said, there's not a lot of volume. I'm looking at the last six months, not a ton of sales on these cards and not high dollar amounts. You can see Alex Bejera's uh, Prism Silver Raw. Uh, we say, you know, rookie card. These are really his first pr Prism cards that have come up. He's been a fighter for quite some time. 10 bucks, 10 bucks for that card raw. And that's a recent high sale uh, that, that ran. Oh, that's sorry. This is the red that I'm looking at. That one's the high sale. That's having recently sold for $58, which was a spike. You've got Jamal Hill at $8 on his Prism Silver Raw, and then $20 compared to the $58 for Pajera. Although this one, the red was numbered a little bit higher to $275 versus $199 uh, comparatively. Now, who do I think is actually going to win this fight? I honestly have no clue. Everything seems to suggest that Pajera is going to win. When you watch Hill fight, it doesn't seem impressive. He's very tough and he has an incredible amount of power. He does not look like a big time athlete. When you see these two guys, it's like, you know, body composition, very different. I think Hill has more of a chance than some people are giving him. All the big names I'm seeing are suggesting that Pajera is gonna win. If we go to sales history and market movers, we look at all the transactions in our database, we can see that uh, some of the more expensive, more notable sales, we've got a, a two and a half thousand dollar, twenty five hundred dollar sale on Pajera's Disco, one of one out of select in a PSA 10, a couple of autos that have done really nice, and then this one from the thumbnail, which I think is a really sharp card. This is obviously the Prism Gold throwback signature. That one in a PSA 9 sold for $2,000 uh, just a little over, um, maybe a little under two weeks ago on March 31st. And then if we jump over and we look at Jamal Hill, He's got a really nice card here. Obviously, the same, a similar story. This is his Panini uh, Prism Black One of One, the true black one of one rookie card, uh, $1,430 that sold for in January of this year. So definitely some big sales. There are some people who are really into UFC who go after the high high end cards, but when you stack that up against other you know super notable sports, $1,400 for a true black Prism One of One obviously doesn't hold a candle to the big main sports. So let's shift gears. We've got the biggest female fight of the night. These are the Chinese names, difficult to pronounce. It's, we've got Zhang Wei Li and Yan Zhaonan. Zhaonan, something along those lines. Uh, Wei Li is obviously kind of a legend at this point. She's minus 450 versus plus 350 for Zhaonan to win this fight. And this is another title fight. I am gonna go with Zhang Wei Li in this fight, but I think the fight odds to me seem a bit surprising. I think Zhaonan has a real chance to win this fight. When you look at UFC uh, cards, like I said, not a ton of volume. And then when you look at the female UFC cards, also not a ton of value, uh, um, volume. But what does stand out to me is the high price points. Again, you have people who are going after these cards. And there are some high sales when we look in our database over the last year for both of these fighters. So $1,800 for uh, a Kaboom PSA 10. Then we've got the Octagon side Disco 1 of 1. You can see everybody loves the Octagon side. That's sort of the equivalent of uh, field level or court side in football and basketball. That sold for $1,400. And then when we shift over 
and we look at uh, Chow Nan. She's got a $1,500 sale here. And then this sort of optic gold vinyl, uh, one of one, that sold for $350 on April 5th, so relatively recently. I don't expect the needle to move too much on either of these fighters, depending on who wins. Uh, there's people talking about uh, Wei Li potentially solidifying herself as the greatest straw weight of all time. If she keeps winning for a few more fights, remains to be seen, but this one actually should be pretty, pretty entertaining. So we switch to the third fight. We've got Justin Gaethje against Max Holloway. Uh, Gaethje is minus 163, Holloway plus 137. And this is one of the three fights that I am most excited about. In terms of entertainment, this one, in my opinion, looks to be the best. It's the third ever BMF fight, which stands for baddest something something. I'll leave it to your imagination or Googling skills. Gaethje won the BMF belt in his last fight against Dustin Poirier. And it was frankly one of the nastiest and most surprising head kicks you'll ever see. Dustin was out cold. I'm a big fan of Dustin Poirier and he was out cold. Uh, true to the billing in a way of the BMF belt title. Now, Max Holloway has never been knocked out. He's as durable as they come. His last three losses all came against Alexander Volkanovsky, one of the greatest featherweight fighters of all time who had many title defenses. But in this case, I am going with Justin to win this fight. I think it's going to be an absolute battle. So let's jump over and look at some notable cards of these guys. I've looked at, you know, kind of a handful of different price points, um, starting with, let's start out here. Actually, I'm gonna sort these over here. Max Holloway's 2013 Finest UFC Refractor Raw. Uh, really nice looking card all the way back in 2013. Yes, they were making UFC cards back then. And that card recently sold for $69 Raw. Not a ton of those out there floating around. I can tell you that much. The print runs were very low on those early Topps Chrome UFC products. Then we've got Gaethje. This is his gold to 10. This is not a rookie card. This is out of 2022 prism, but always uh, worthwhile to highlight a gold prism. That card only sold for $89 for a gold prism. 89 bucks for a pretty notable fighter. Not a bad price, I would say. And then 2018 Topps Chrome, still even in 2018, not high print runs. This is a PSA 10 pop seven on this Topps Chrome diamond refractor Gaethje. This is a rookie card from 2018 and this card sold for $135. And then we've got Holloway's Gold Raw from 2021, $340. So interesting to see those two cards, the Prism uh, 2022 Gaethje going for 89 and 340 on Holloway. We've got a Kaboom BGS 95 notable high sale for Max Holloway. This one sold for 600 bucks. And then everybody loves the Color Blast. We just had a fun IG reel on our SCI Instagram asking whether people like Color Blast or Kabooms. This is a PSA 10 Pop 12. That card sold for $1,100. So this one definitely should be an interesting fight. If you're into UFC, let me know down below who you think has the edge on that particular fight. All right, next up in the third fight that I am extremely, extremely interested in. So I got the the, the Hill, the title fight between Hill and Pajera. The last one we just talked about and this one, Charles Oliveira do Bronx against Armand Sarukian, uh, the Georgian terror. And frankly, both of these guys, either one of these guys could win this fight. They've got plus 187 on Oliveira, minus 225 on Sarukian. And I think that's a little too lopsided. Oliveira, once again, for like the eighth, maybe 10th consecutive fight, comes in somehow as the underdog in Vegas odds. And I can tell you that other than his fight against Islam Makhachev, that didn't go particularly well for those betting against Oliveira in the past. In fact, he won those other nine fights. So those who bet on Justin Gaethje and Dustin Poirier back in 2021 and 22, well, Oliveira beat both of those guys. Now, Oliveira has only lost one fight since 2018. His submission skills are second to absolutely no one in UFC. And Armand Sarukian, on the other hand, also quite terrifying with a lot of power. He KO'd Benil Dariush with a knee-fist combo in the first minute into his fight in December. He's young. He likely has a little more vitality than Oliveira, but I am in no way ever betting against Charles Oliveira, at least not in this fight. It's just not going to happen. I would take the plus 187 odds. So if we jump over and look at some of their notable cards, we've got Oliveira's 2010, yes, 2010, tops knockout UFC gold cool image here and you can see while it may look to the untrained eye like he's losing he's not he's likely about to submit this guy choke him out maybe an arm bar who knows but this is the position that Oliveira likes to get his opponents into and when you do it's like a boa constrictor you don't really stand a chance this card sold for $80 on March 31st then we've got his color blast uh, this is out of 2022 prism UFC this card sold for $800 
That's a nice looking one. I like the, the background. Some of the color blasts are a little more lackluster. That one, in my opinion, really pops, looks really nice. And then for Tsuruki, and we've got his PSA 10 prism base, only selling for 30 bucks. That was a pretty recent sale, relatively recent in January. Uh, PSA 10 pop nine. So not a ton of these, obviously base prisms, you know, we can have that debate all, all day long, but it is one of more, his more iconic rookie cards. And in a PSA 10 for 30 bucks, I probably would have taken that to be totally honest, especially if I think he's going to win this fight. And then we've got a gold shimmer PSA 10. This one sold in the middle of March and that one did pretty well, 1.7K. I'm, I'm assuming whoever bought this, it's the gold shimmer to five, does expect him to pull off the fight this time against Oliveira and then have a chance for the title fight coming up soon. Between these two guys, I would say Oliveira needs to win this to maintain his card value going forward. I think this would be a really nice bo bounce back. Depending how he wins, if he does submit Sarukian, he might see his cards go up. On the other hand, I think Sarukian, if he wins, tends to actually potentially see his values really go up. He would likely get lined up for a title fight in that case, and you usually see a little bit of run up in anticipation for UFC fighters albeit typically short-lived when that does happen. All right, next fight, and we're gonna kind of speed these up. We've got Bo Nickel versus Cody Brundage, and this one is one of the biggest, most lopsided uh, betting odds on any main fight card ever in the history of UFC. It's Bo Nickel at minus 2,000. He is a massive favorite, former three-time NCAA national champion in wrestling. His cards were in the top five last year at least once or twice. And Brunage, on the other hand, doesn't have any cards, if that tells you anything about how good he is. So this is very much a stepping stone fight for Nickel. This feels like, uh, for those of you who have seen Dune 2, when the guy goes out and is just fighting you know, other drugged fighters, that's what this feels like a little bit. Hopefully he's not actually drugged, but Nickel should come away easily in this fight. I'd be surprised to even see this go into round two. So if we look at Nickel, his notable set is definitely 2023 Prism UFC. He's got a handful of cards. You can get these on a pretty good price point right now, so it'll be really interesting to see how these prices evolve over time with his career, but his raw prism base going for about five bucks, uh, not including shipping. We've got his ice raw, $24. We've got his silver at two bucks. Uh, that's interesting to see two bucks versus five. Again, a lot of times that has to do with shipping costs, which unfortunately we can't pull in as part of our eBay API. So always look at those prices and factor those in. And then we've got his prism silver and a PSA 10 that one for $130, a much nicer price point. And as we look over the last year, going back to when he was very hot up until now, things have definitely, uh, definitely cooled off a lot, down 70%, 30%, 98%, but down just 16% on the PSA 10. So those graded ones on a smaller pop count, holding much more nicely over time. It's definitely gonna be nickel on this one. I would be, uh, and the rest of the world would be very shocked if it goes in a different direction. Next fight. We've got the sort of samurai himself, Yuri Prohashka, plus 100 against Alexander Rakic, minus 125. This fight is a major wild card, and that's why there are nearly even odds. And that makes sense to me. Yuri is, well, he's kind of a quirky dude. If you just look up interviews with him, you can't really tell if he's super zen or if he's taken one too many blows to his head. He's a fighter for sure, but after his last fight in November when he lost in the second round via knockout to Alex Pejera, he looked like he might be headed in the wrong direction in his fighting career. Then again, Pajera can do that to literally anyone. He can make you look like a complete fool. Now, Rakic hasn't fought since 2022 when he injured his knee in a fight with Jan Blahovic, which he lost. I'm going with Yuri to win this one, even though he's the underdog. I think Rakic stands to gain more by winning, especially with his cards, which as we'll see are pretty cheap. But Yuri definitely stands to lose more if he loses. I could see his values going down significantly. So you might want to sell them, well, right now, uh, before the fight, if you think Yuri's going to lose. So I've got a handful, just a, a few notable cards here. We've got Yuri in a PSA 10, a select gold rookie card from 2021, $304. We've got his downtown. This is kind of a fun card, uh, letting out one of his typical cries. I will say he's very entertaining, especially when he comes into the octagon. $208 for this one raw, having sold uh, recently on April 9th. Then much cheaper, much, much cheaper on Rakic. 2019 Topps uh, Chrome UFC Gold Refractor number to 50. This card sold for just 30 bucks raw. And we've got a PSA 10 auto, his first auto. This one is just a pop seven. And this card sold for just $52.55. So that's why I think Rakic has a little bit more room to go up. All right, we're gonna go quick hitter. And we're gonna look at the last handful of uh, fights and just look at some of the price movements. 
We've got Calvin Qatar at plus 140 versus Aljamain Sterling minus 170. I definitely like Sterling in this fight between these two guys. We go over to sales history, sort by price. Here's a really cool uh, Sterling worth highlighting. Again, we've got the Prism Flashback. This one's the black one of one, really nice looking card that sold for $407. Then we can shift over and we can look at Qatar and he's got his Prism Black. This is his rookie in a PSA 10 sold for $610. Let's jump over and look at the legend herself, Holly Holm. Like I said, she's most noted for having knocked out, uh, uh, beaten Ronda Rousey. 2022 Select PSA 10, this one sold for $456. Like I said, some of these uh, ladies can definitely command high price points, just like the men. And she's up against Kayla Harrison, who is a uh, Olympic judo fighter. She's minus 400. I definitely like Harrison to win this fight. You can see PSA 5, uh, auto 10, so pretty low grade here, PSA 5, auto 10, but it is an autograph. Uh, this one having sold for $450, that's her Olympic gold number to 15. And then the final fight from the preliminary card, uh, uh, from the uh, the earlier card, we've got uh, Yus uh, Sadiq Yusuf and 51 bucks. That's the high sale in our sales history database for this guy. He doesn't have a ton of cards out there. This is his platinum one of one. So if I'm looking at these and I think this guy has any chance to rise in his career, maybe I go for it, but in this case, I don't. I think he's going to lose to Diego Lopez, who actually had a sale go for $955 most recently. This is 2024 uh, U uh, UFC. This is numbered to 10. This is an auction, assuming it actually got paid for. People are pretty high on him. I did see his last fight and he looked pretty impressive. So what do you think, are you into UFC? If you made it to this point in the video, I'm guessing you probably are. And if so, who do you like to win the fights tonight? Whose cards stand to go up the most if they do win? Let me know as always down in the comments. And while you're there, do me a huge favor and like this video, make sure to subscribe, share it with a friend. Thanks so much for watching until next time. Happy investing, keep on collecting and make sure to have fun.